following presentation is intended for users of tools which emit vibration and which can potentially cause harm to individuals. This is a presentation to explain how ReactX technology, which has been invested in by your employer, can help protect you when using such tools. Hand arm vibration syndrome is the name given to all of the potential medical injuries that can result from the use of vibratory tools. They are in medical terms termed neurological injuries, which means damage to nerve endings, vascular injuries, which means damage to the blood vessels, and musculoskeletal injuries, which means damage to the connection between the muscles and the tissue. Putting aside the medical terms, what's important to understand is the risk of using tools that emit vibration into the hands. Using such tools for prolonged times can result in impacts such as you not being able to hold things consistently, like a mobile phone or even a pint. You'll be unable to do intricate work, such as tying shoelaces or small buttons, and also sleepless nights from the pins and needles and the tingling that can result in your fingers. So to give you some appreciation of how likely you may be to experience such injuries, there is a relationship between the human response to vibration and the level of vibration that you're exposed to. If you're exposed to what is termed the action value from the HSE, and I'll explain that term in the next slide, and you're exposed to that level regularly over a period of about 12 years, then you have a 10% probability of developing the vascular damage vibration for your finger, which results in you not being able to feel things at the end of your fingers. In order to be able to quantify the level of risk that you face whilst using tools, the HSE have come up with quite a simple point system. And this point system combines the two factors which come into play in terms of essentially determining the level of risk that you're undertaking. Those two factors are, first of all, the amount of time that you're exposed to that vibration. And secondly, how strong that vibration is. That is, what is the vibration magnitude of that tool? And any combination of time and any combination of vibration strength can be combined in a manner to give you points. And if you're exposed to what is considered an exposure action value of 100 points, then it's necessary to take action to reduce that exposure level. And if you're exposed as high as 400 points, then that's considered a legal limit above which people should not work. So just to put a little bit more emphasis on this, the following is guidance from the HSE and applies to healthy individuals with no hand arm vibration symptoms. So below the action value of 100 points, no action is necessary. If you're exposed between 100 and 400 points, then it's necessary to take action to reduce that risk to as low as reasonably practical. It also means that you should be given access to regular occupational health screening. An exposure value of 400 points or more means that you should stop working. And again, just to say that these are points values which are based and relevant for healthy workers. So given that these are thresholds under which your exposure should be controlled, it's important for you also to appreciate that you are very much able to influence the level of exposure that you're exposed to when you're using tools. And this graphic here shows you some of the factors which can come into play and will impact the level of risk that you receive when you're using the tools. So the first one about tool selection is about making sure that you're using the right tool for the job. As an example of that, if a hedge trimmer was to be used to cut for example, a thick branch which really needed some sort of chainsaw type tool, then you could expose yourself very readily well above the exposure limit value. Applying excessive force to a tool or pushing down on the tool rather than letting the tool do its work, again, can significantly affect the amount of risk that's coming back into your body through your hands. In a similar vein, 
how tightly you grip the tool's handles has an impact. Again, it should be about letting the tool do the work as opposed to forcing the tool to do the work. And then finally, the condition of the tool itself and also the accessory used with that tool are very important factors in determining how much vibration magnitude is given off by that tool. And you should always highlight to your supervisors any situations where you think a tool is not performing properly, as you'll probably be able to determine that from the amount of vibration you can feel coming into your hands. So in this next slide, what we're trying to do is to bring to life a real example of just how much variability is possible when individuals set about doing the same task. It's a work study of a group of employees excavating a hole in the ground where all of the employees were using the same tool. They were asked to share the work in essentially two and three man teams. And this exercise was repeated several times over. By repeating the exercise several times over, it was possible to establish that in digging any one hole, the maximum exposure from that exercise was approximately 280 points. Therefore, if the work was shared between two man teams, for example, then the maximum exposure should really be 140 points. And that's the blue line in this graph. And for the entire exercise, the holes were dug by groups of either two, three, or even four men. It was never ever the case where any one individual excavated a hole on their own. So having done this work, we then looked at the readings from all of the individuals involved. Specifically, what was the maximum exposure that they received? You can see from the graph that there's a huge variability. So the employer thinks that everybody should be below the blue line. In reality, there are five people above that line and the operator, Pete, far exceeded what the task should have resulted in, in terms of exposure risk, and is actually almost at a level of exposure limit value, which as we know, isn't appropriate. And the reason why he was exposed to such high levels is because he didn't share the work evenly with his colleague. In addition to that, when he used the tool, he wasn't using it well. He was using it such that more energy was coming into his body than was actually going into the road surface, which then also caused the time of excavation to be longer. All in all, resulting in significant exposure beyond what his employer thought was actually possible. So what we're about to talk about now is how the technology that your company has invested in from React Tech can help ensure that you're not put in the same position as Pete. So first of all, there's a wrist-worn device, and that wrist-worn device essentially gathers all of that information on the use of tools in terms of how much time on that tool and the vibration magnitude of the tool, and it gives that information on its screen. We then have a means of getting the data from that device and transmitting it to what's called our hosted reporting system. And in doing so, that gets all of the information that's gathered by that watch device back to your employer so they can ensure that they're keeping you working in safe conditions. So in terms of how the system actually works, there will be posters available beside the equipment normally to remind you of these steps. But just in summary, you will sign out a device at the start of each working day and you'll be given an ID card which identifies you to the system to allow you to do that. You collect the unit from what's called a charging station. There's then a wrist strap into which you insert the device in order to attach it snugly onto your wrist. When you then go to use the tools, if your employer has fitted these with tool tags, you press a button on the side of the watch once, and then you present the watch face up to that RFID tag on the tool, you'll hear a beep to confirm that you've actually connected to that tool and you're ready to use it. The razor device that was mentioned in the previous slide is assigned in a similar way. You may be given one of these devices either so that your employer is getting data collected from your watch and other devices during the working day, 
but also potentially to help you with loan worker protection, as it does have those features as well. If your employer is wanting you to use it for that purpose, there's additional training information that will be supplied on that. At the end of your working day, you return your watch back to the charging station. You don't need to return it to exactly the same charging station, and you don't need to return it to the same bay within that charging station. Just simply return it. It is important through the course of the working day that you do wear your watch on your wrist at all times. And I'll come back to that point in a later slide. Finally, once your watch is docked back into the charging station, the data is automatically transmitted to the analytics platform by a nearby gateway device and information is then available to be reviewed and assessed. So now we'll go into a little bit of detail on the sort of information that's available from your watch and the alerts and notifications that it will give you. So along the top of the display, you can view the enabled watch functions. This will be set in advance depending on what your watch was purchased for. You can also see the battery level indicator there. In the center of the device, it shows you either the time remaining for you to reach a certain exposure threshold or the number of exposure points that you've accumulated throughout the course of your working day. A T on the left hand side will indicate that the watch is collecting two exposure points and an S will indicate the collection of sensed exposure points. This is something that your manager will have decided and set up in advance. The coloured circle displays your threshold levels. So if you're below your action value, the green portion of the circle will be lit up. If you were to exceed your action value, the amber portion would then light up. And finally, if you were to breach the exposure limit value, the red portion would light up. Now, while your exposure is increasing, you will receive alerts from your watch. So it will both buzz and vibrate to alert you to the fact that your exposure level is at a dangerous level and the length of that alerting will increase with your exposure level. If your supervisor has a razor device, one of the other really useful features with that device is that they can use it to give you immediate feedback on how well a tool is actually being used. So when a tool is being used most effectively and when a tool is in very good condition, it will give its lowest vibration levels. So with the razor device, a supervisor can stand close to an Arlink user and give them feedback on how well the tool is performing while it's being used. So for instance, if you were to over grip the tool or to push the tool too hard, then it would cause the vibration to increase. And there's a little indicator on the razor screen, which will show that vibration level increasing relative to the expected vibration of the tool. And it will also give a reading in points per hour. So obviously the higher the points per hour, the higher the vibration level. So we've mentioned a couple of different types of points so far. So just to explain, the watch is always collecting two types of data. Tool exposure points, which are based on the predefined vibration magnitude of the tool and the amount of time in use, and sensed exposure points based on what the watch is sensing at the wrist and for how long. Now, should you forget to tag onto a tool or should the tool not be available with the tag value, it will still be able to determine the have exposure level that you're being exposed to by monitoring the vibration level sensed by the device at the wrist point. So when we are picking up vibration without information from a tool tag, it generates sensed exposure points. So finally, just some key points to remember in terms of how the watch is working. It's always sensing vibration and whenever it picks up vibration, that's when it starts counting the time of a tool being used. If you tag onto a tool tag, the letter T will appear and you'll see your points in the center of the screen. It's important when you move between tools that you tag to each tool that you use. 
So when you move from a second tool onto a second tool from the first, you don't have to tag off the first tool, but you do have to tag onto the second tool. If you forget to tag onto your second tool, you will be collecting points, but at the rate that was applicable to the first tool. If you stopped using vibratory tools and the last tool that you were tagged onto was quite a powerful tool, then there is an ability to switch your device off. And that's simply by pressing the button and holding it until it beeps and the word off appears on the screen. Then you let go and confirm again with another press of the button that you do indeed want to switch the device off. And again, all of these details are shown in your posters to remind you of how that works. So just to highlight the key takeaway points from this presentation, HAVS is a very serious condition. Your employer has invested in, the, in this technology to help protect you, so use it responsibly. It's important for you to tag on to each tool when your employer has provided you with tools that have tags on them. If you are moving off a high vibrating tool or a powerful tool, you can switch the device off. When you want to switch it back on, simply tag back on to the next tool that you intend to use. It's important that you return the unit at the end of every day to allow it to be charged and for the data that's collected to be transmitted onwards to the reporting system. Do not remove your watch from your wrist unless it's switched off or you're returning it back to the charging station. If in doubt, there's really no reason to take it off your wrist. So this concludes our presentation. A little graphic here to perhaps encourage you that vibration white finger or hand arm vibration syndrome is, as we said, a serious debilitating disease that will really impact your quality of life. Your employer has invested in Reactex technology. Use it as it will help to keep you safe. Thank you for your attention.